will be taken from John 10, 11 through 18. Please hear these words. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. And you may be seated. And if you would, please join me in prayer once again. Father, I pray that your spirit will be ever present in our midst. And I ask that you allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be pleasing and acceptable to your word, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. On Friday, I got home for lunch, and I opened up the refrigerator. No, nothing there. <laughs> I went to our pantry. Yeah, not really. Wasn't feeling it. I was hungry. Have any of y'all ever been hungry before? And you look, and you're just like, no, I want food. <laughs> None of y'all have ever been hungry before like that, have you? I wanted food desperately on Friday. I needed it, I had to have it, and I just wasn't seeing it. In the 23rd Psalm, it starts off this way, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This year, in 2020, we've been reading the 23rd Psalm as our affirmation of faith. And it isn't because I don't like the Apostles' Creed. Remember, I talked about the Apostles' Creed in the fall, if y'all were here. Um, it's because I think the 23rd Psalm has a lot to say about who God is and who we are in relationship with God. But all too often, the 23rd Psalm gets assigned to a funeral. Right? When do you hear it most of the time? You hear it at somebody's funeral because it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. It's like, oh, it mentions death, it's comforting, we'll say it at funerals and pat people on the back and say, God is with you and everything will be okay. But the 23rd Psalm is so much more than that. And so what we're going to do during this Lenten season is we're going to walk through verse by verse the 23rd Psalm and look at the rest of the Bible and see what the other biblical text has to say about it. So the 23rd Psalm starts off with, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And here, in John chapter 10, Jesus says that I am the good shepherd, right? Good job. Y'all were listening just a few minutes ago. I appreciate it. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. So if you have your Bibles or your phone with the Bible app on them or something like that, we're going to go through John chapter 10 a little bit this morning. So pull it out and go with me there. So it's John chapter 10, and Anthony, can we go ahead and throw verse 11 back up on the screen? Yeah, great. So even if you don't have your Bible, we'll put it on the screen. It starts off, and Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, I have never been a shepherd. Although my last name is McEwen, and you, E-W-E, is the female version of a sheep, and maybe my ancestors were shepherds, I've never actually done it. Um, but what I do know about shepherds, from what I've read, is that shepherds typically don't die for their sheep. That's not a good shepherd, is it? The job of the shepherd is to lead the flock, to guide the flock, to protect the flock, and a shepherd would never die for a sheep. 
I mean, that doesn't make any sense. How many of y'all, if anybody had a ranching background, I know a few of y'all do, would see a cow being attacked by a wolf and be like, you know what, wolf, come and kill me instead of the cow. No, that doesn't make sense. And so Jesus, he's saying, I'm the good shepherd, but he's going a step further. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. So Jesus isn't just speaking literally. He doesn't have a flock of sheep, but he's saying, look, I have people that are going to follow me. People that listen to me, people that hear my voice, and my job as their shepherd is to lay my life down for them. That's just dumbfounding. That a shepherd who leads and guides the flock would willingly die for his sheep. Now, you know we're the sheep in this situation, right? We're the dumb little animals that just do what they're told. I showed hogs in high school, and hogs, when we would take them to the truck that would be slaughtered, um, to take them to the slaughterhouse, we would have to whip them. I mean, they would pull out like little prods to prod them onto the ship. You know what they would, or the truck, you know what they do with sheep? They had one goat. The goat would go to the front of the truck, and the sheep, meh, they'd follow the little goat on the truck. And the goat would come up in the truck, and then the sheep were like, how did we get here? What's going on? They're not the smartest of animals. And Jesus is saying, look, I'm the shepherd, you're the sheep. And we don't necessarily get it, but I'm going to lay my life down for you. And that's what the season of Lent is about. This 46 days that we have from Ash Wednesday to um, Easter, it's about death and denial. It's realizing that sometimes we have to die to ourselves and die to our own desires so we can experience God on a deeper level. And what Jesus is saying is, as the good shepherd, I'm going to lay my life down for you. He continues on and says stuff about, um, in verse 12, you know, a hired hand doesn't do this. If they see wolves coming, they're going to run away. Y'all have all been in places of people, of work, where people don't own the place, and they're just kind of like, do what you want to, we don't care. Have y'all ever had that sort of waiter, that sort of waitress? They're just like, we don't care. And that's what Jesus is saying is, look, there's going to be other people that come, and they're not the good shepherd, and they're really not going to care. And in 14, he continues on, and he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Makes me think of the 139th Psalm, where the psalmist says that God knows you before you sit down and before you rise up. He knows the words of your mouth before they're even formed on your tongue. He knows you intimately. He knows you greatly. He knows you better than I ever could. I have been there since before my children were born. We have a picture of Sam in the womb, and he was making this little face. And after he was born, because it's crazy with technology that you have now, right? You had that, like a 3D picture of my baby. And after he came out, he made that exact same face that he made in the womb. I was dumbfounded. I was like, whoa, baby Sam in the womb, baby Sam out of the womb, now baby Sam's 11, and not such of a baby anymore. <laughs> I think that I know Sam pretty well. But what Jesus is saying is, I know my sheep better than I know my son. He knows us more intimately than I, as a father, know my children. I know them, and they know me. And he continues on in 15 by saying, just as the father knows me, and I know my father. This is a pretty big statement. He's saying that he intimately knows the life of the Father. And what he's doing is Jesus is leading us somewhere. That Jesus is always teaching and leading us and guiding us. And I'm not going to be able to go through this all of John today, but he's leading us to John chapter 10 and verse 30, just a few verses later. Jesus says, I and the Father are one. And so Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd and I know the Father. And the reason that I know the Father is because I am one with the Father. And this is the mystery of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, three in one, the same yet different. And Jesus is saying, I know the Father because we are the same, and the Father knows me, so I am here on behalf of the Father, and the reason I'm here is so that I can again lay my life down for you. He continues on in verse 16, and he says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold, and I must bring them also. Just think about it. The other sheep that aren't of this fold. Think about people that don't have the hope and the joy and the love of Christ. And what he's saying is, I, I know there are people that don't know my voice. 
but I long for them to hear you. And it's my job as the good shepherd is to go out and to grow the flock. And that's what he's saying is, as a good shepherd, my job is to go to people that don't know the goodness of who I am and to embrace them where they're at, to love them where they're at, and to say, welcome, come home, my child. And they will listen to my voice. I think this is where the rubber hits the road. It is a good sheep knows the voice of a shepherd. Now, I've never been a shepherd like I established earlier. But I've often heard it said that good shepherds can train their sheep to listen to them and them alone. And so I have a video this morning that I'd like you to see, and we'll see if it goes off without a Bernie Sanders ad like it did earlier this morning for me. <laughs> I in no way am endorsing Bernie Sanders if he does come up on an ad here. These are people trying to call in the sheep. <laughs> Tika, tika, toka, toka, whatever it is they were saying. And the sheep don't respond unless they hear the voice of their master, of their shepherd. What does that say about us being able to discern and hear the voice of our shepherd? And I think this Lent, he wants us to know more and more of who he is. The 23rd Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is. I don't know if y'all remember the first time that God names himself. It's an exodus. God is speaking to Moses at the burning bush, and Moses is a lost, wandering shepherd himself. And this bush starts speaking to him, and he says, well, who are you? And God answers, I am. How do you like that for an answer? You just come up and ask me who I am, and I say, yeah, I am. Who are you? me. That's not really much of an answer, is it? And so what God is doing through the rest of the Bible is he's telling us more and more and more of who he is. He is saying, this is who I am. So he's saying, I am. The Lord is my. And I talk a lot of times here in church that we are better together than we are apart. That Christianity isn't just a me religion, it is a we religion for us. But at the end of the day, Christianity is my relationship with God is about me and God, and if you don't know my God, if it's not the Lord is my, if it's the Lord is your, or the Lord is the pastor's, or the Lord is the church's, if it's not the Lord is my, then you don't really know God. Because God is speaking to you, and he says, I want to know you, and I want you to be have me as my God. I want you to be able to cry out and say, my God, you are mine. He wants to have that relationship with you. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd leads from the front, right? He, came, he was in front of the sheep. He called the sheep to him, and they followed. A shepherd protects and provides and accommodates for the sheep. He leads them and allows them to know that they will be safe. And what this does is if we know that the Lord is my shepherd, then it takes us from a help me relationship with God to a have-me relationship. I'm sure a lot of you out there, like me, have used the help-me prayers a lot. Right? 
God, help me to stay awake through the rest of the sermon. <laughs> God, help me in this situation. God, help my family. God, help my church. God, help my nation. Y'all pray those prayers, right? right? And those aren't bad prayers, but God wants to take us from a help me to a have me. Have y'all seen those bumper stickers that say, Jesus is my co-pilot? I hope none of y'all have them, because if I do, I'm going to step all over your toes. <laughs> but what is a co-pilot? A pilot is a person that sits in the main seat and steers the airplane 95% of the time until they have to go to the bathroom. And they say, hey, co-pilot, I've got to leave right now. Will you take control? And so when we imply that Jesus is my co-pilot, we're saying, okay, Jesus, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of my life, and I'm going to lead it, and I'm going to guide it, and I'm going to sit in direction. And... When I accidentally steer into that storm over there, I'm going to say, help me, help me, help me, Jesus, you take the reins. None of y'all ever do that, do you? It's like, I'm good, God, until I'm not, but help me, help me, help me. And Jesus is saying, no, I don't want to be your co-pilot. I want to be your shepherd. I want to be the one that's out in front of you that's calling, and you follow my voice. I want you to surrender your life to me so that when I call, when you listen You'll follow in my footsteps, and maybe sometimes we can avoid the storms, and maybe sometimes you'll go through the storm, but I'm going to lead you and guide you through it. And that's the difference between having God as a co-pilot, God having as a shepherd. That's the difference between just God help me and God have me. And God is calling us to be our shepherd, to have us. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. In the Hebrew... It's more closely translated to the NIV. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. There's a difference between not wanting and not lacking. On Friday when I was so hungry, there was food in the refrigerator. There was food in the pantry. I call our pantry mini Costco's because we live so far away from one when we buy. Go there, we have to buy everything and bring it back home. I just didn't want any of the food. And then I was like, okay, I've been saying this over and over again, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Okay, I have food, I have bread and ham and cheese, I can make a sandwich. So I had a sandwich. It wasn't glorious and glamorous, but it was food, I wasn't lacking. You see, when we lack nothing, we realize that God is our shepherd, not our co-pilot, that we are calling out to him. When we lack nothing, we're making sure that he is my God. Not just your God, but that he is mine. And when we lack nothing, we're able to listen to his voice. To discern the ability between the voice of God and the, well, Dustin really wants to do it. That is how we lack nothing, is by completely and utterly depending upon God. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Eight words. I think you can remember eight words for six weeks, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Over and over again. For the next six weeks, for the rest of your life. Can we instill it in ourselves that the Lord is my shepherd, and I'm going to lack nothing? Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you sent the Son, Jesus Christ, to be the good shepherd for us. That he leads in front of us, that he calls his voice out to us, that he is our guide and our director of life. As we learn better and better to how to surrender ourselves to him, help us to know more fully the words, The Lord is my shepherd. And I lack nothing. So God, this morning, help us to lack nothing because you are here in our midst. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.